Welcome to the Nano Networking and Molecular Communication module of the Colibri project. My name is Shukru Kuran from Boazic University. In this video, we will be covering the fifth part of the basic level of the module. We will be talking on communication channels and channel capacity evaluation. This part builds up upon the five-step communication model we have discussed in the earlier videos and explain how this capacity evaluation can be applied to the communication via diffusion system. A binary channel is a very basic communication channel model used in the field of information theory. Like all other generic channel models, the binary channel can be applied for the analysis of any communication system. It doesn't need to be a classical wired or wireless communication system. Any type of communication system, electromagnetic based, optical, diffusion based, even a dialogue between two human beings can be modeled with it. In this model, one symbol represents a single bit of information, 0 or 1. When this information is transmitted over the communication medium, it can arrive at the receiver unchanged or it can be warped due to numerous issues in the channel and arrive incorrectly at the receiver. We call the first case successful reception and the second case incorrect decoding. Here we define the four time varying intermediary parameters of the communication model as xt, the one bit of information to be transmitted, st, the number of messenger molecules released from the transmitter, s bar t, the number of messenger molecules hit at the receiver within one symbol duration, and finally the yt, the one bit of information received at the receiver device. In the transmission part, the transmitter decides on the value of st based on the current bit value of xt as n0 if the bit value is 0 and n1 if the bit value is 1. These released molecules propagate in the channel and the receiver starts counting the number of messenger molecules hitting itself within the current symbol duration. If this value, the s bar t, is below a given threshold tau, the received information is translated as zero. If s bar t exceeds the same threshold, the receiver then decides that the transmitted message is carrying the bit value of one. When considering a simple diffusion process where all messenger molecules propagate through the environment independent from each other, we can say that S bar t, the number of messenger molecules hit at the receiver within a single symbol duration, is a binomial random variable with st and f hit, reflecting the number of independent trials and each individual messenger molecules hitting probability. Then, to calculate the decoding prob probabilities, we need the four conditional probabilities of yt is equal to y given that xt is equal to x, where both y and x can either be 0 or 1. Putting the form formulation of yt from the previous slide, for all of these four cases, we can write down the resulting probabilities as shown in the table. Then, the decoding probabilities, where y is equal to 1, can be converted into a regularized incomplete beta function, and the complementary decoding probability, where y is equal to 0, becomes 1 minus the same regular as incomplete beta function. After finding the closed form solutions for all four decoding probabilities, we can calculate the mutual information of the system, where the input is given by capital X and the output by capital Y with this formula. This is a double summation with joint probabilities and conditional probabilities. The joint probabilities can be expanded into the multiplication of the conditional probability and the probability of the input having a specific bit value. The probability of the input to be a given bit value is solely dependent on the specific message. For this evaluation, it is usually assumed that for a specific bit value, 
it is equally likely to have a value of 0 and 1. Therefore, this probability is generally assumed to be 0.5 for both cases. We are nearly done. We just need one more step to go. The mutual information we'll calculate is specific for a single tau threshold value. By definition, the channel capacity is the maximum possible mutual information rate of the system, which means we have to find the optimal threshold value that maximizes the mutual information. This statement is formalized by this mathematical optimization problem. A maximization problem of the mutual information calculation over all possible tau values. In a binary channel, this optimization problem can be easily solved by an exhaustive search which yields the maximum mutual information, hence the channel capacity. So, starting from finding the fraction of hitting values using the microscopic theory of diffusion and the scenario parameters, we calculate the channel capacity using information theory. After looking at them carefully, we can say that these calculations are not that hard to understand, yet alone solve. Remember that we use the simple binary channel for the capacity evaluation. In reality, the system gets much more complicated with additional mechanisms and concerns. First of all, what happens if we want to differentiate between a zero-bit value and no communication? We have to consider a third value for both the x and the y which means we need two thresholds instead of one. Another issue arises when we want to consider the effect of residual messenger molecules from the previous symbols on top of the current symbol. This is a very realistic problem considering the transmitter is sending many bits one after another and the messenger molecules do not just go away when the symbol duration expires. Lastly, in modern communication systems, a symbol rarely represents just one bit of an information. Usually, a symbol represents two, three, or even four bits of information, which means that all the calculations above becomes much more messier and harder to calculate in these scenarios. So, we have finished calculating the channel capacity of a simple diffusion system considering a binary channel in which one symbol represents one bit of information. This analysis was focused specifically on the communication via diffusion system. We will be concluding the basic level with the details of the terahertz signaling in the sixth video of the basic level. Here you can see the references of this video. Thank you for listening and see you next time.